This is Ashley from Mobility International USA speaking. And you are here at our virtual career fair for people with disabilities. And we're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for making time. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so if you join this webinar, uh, you are likely someone who's interested in learning uh, about some opportunities in some very exciting career fields of international exchange and international okay. development. And we'll be saying more about that a little later. But first, I'm going to just share a few housekeeping tips so that we can um, have a smooth uh, event here. So first thing you should know is that we're recording this session and we're going to be able to make it uh, available publicly. Um, by sometime next week, we'll put it on our YouTube so that anyone who wasn't able to join today um, can enjoy it later. And you're all definitely welcome to uh, share it with friends and colleagues as you wish. Um, we're also going to make the slides available as well, because this presentation will have some visuals involved, but we're going to make sure that um, any visuals on the slides will be described. This uh, webinar, you might note, um, we have uh, American Sign Language interpreters, as well as international sign interpreters. And um, those should be appearing on your screen at all times. But if you are having any uh, difficulty seeing them and you need to see them, my colleague Megan, uh, you can send her a chat and she can help you with any technical assistance. We also have English captioning, live captioning. And if you would like to activate that, hit the CC captioning button in your Zoom. Um, and then we also have to go along with that. If you prefer to see your captions in a separate window, you can use this link that I'm putting in the chat, which is a stream text link that will open the captions in a separate window so you can follow along. We're going to ask that you keep your camera and microphones off, um, at least for now. Um, and the reason for this is so that we can make sure that our uh, sign language interpreters are uh, easily visible to folks who need to see them. And I'd also like to, you to invite you to, um, you know, feel free to use the chat window. You can chat your questions throughout this event directly to me, Ashley, at my USA. Um, so if you have any questions during the sessions, we won't stop to ask those questions until later on during our Q&A segment, but we definitely welcome you to ask them uh, anytime you wish. And I'll be going through the questions towards the end um, so that we can hopefully hear lots of great questions. But for now, why don't you go ahead and put in the chat to me, if you wish, maybe say where you're where you're from, either which country you're from, or if you're in the United States, maybe say which city or state. So um, if you wanna just get uh, comfortable with using that chat and uh, let's start with just share what country are you from? I'd love to know, let's see. I'm seeing uh, one person's from the Philippines, Haiti, Germany, India. Uh, someone from Pakistan, but now currently in Chicago, someone from Nepal, United States. This is wonderful. We're getting people from all over the world, Ethiopia. Well, um, it means a lot that you're tuning in from your uh, so many different parts of the world. Um, I know it might, might be a strange hour <laughs> for some folks, depending on your time zone. I'm also seeing some um, folks in the U.S., in California and Connecticut, so both ends of the continent. Um, well, we're really glad that you're all here. Thank you so much. And so once again, um, I'd like to just share that uh, this virtual career fair is really intended for um, people with disabilities to learn about some exciting opportunities. And here to say a little bit more about that is our fearless leader, Susan Siegel. Susan. Uh, let's have you turn your sound on. Hi, all good? All good. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. This is Susan Siegel speaking. As many of you know, I'm the a CEO and co-founder of Mobility International USA and a proud wheelchair rider. And I am so excited. I was looking at the registration list last night 
And I see so many old friends, alumni, and also wanna give a big welcome to all the new folks who are joining us. As many of you know, MyUSA advances disability rights and leadership globally. And we have been working in the field of international exchange and trying to increase the number of disabled people in both international exchange and ensuring that people with disabilities are part of all international development and humanitarian organizations. But today is something different and I'm super excited about this. Today, we are really gonna be talking about something that's very close to my heart is that we need to have more disabled people being on the staff of international exchange and international development organizations. We wanna see more disabled people being in, interns, being consultants, board members, advisors, both in the US and internationally. So I really want to thank all the organizations who are with us who are gonna be presenting both recorded and also are with us live. Many of them are from what we call EDI, which is our Excellence in Development and Disability Inclusion Initiative. And these organizations have joined MyUSA as a, as a member of EDI because they are also passionate to include disabled people in their organizations in all aspects. So, so excited to hear from them. And today we're also excited to hear from folks who are with our Roundtable Consortium. And those organizations are part of our National Clearinghouse and Disability and Exchange, NCDE, which is part of MyUSA. And as many of you know, the Clearinghouse is also promoting the increase of people with disabilities in all aspects of international exchange. So Ashley, I am so grateful for all the organizations who are here, everyone who made this possible. And as you said, please, as you hear these presentations, put your questions in the chat and we will be having a very exciting live Q&A at the end of this session. So without further ado, um, I'm, I'm again, welcome each and every one of you to this exciting webinar. I think as disabled people take their rightful place as leaders and participants in all these organizations, I think we will truly have a more just and equitable world. So with that, Ashley, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Well, I do have a little bit more ado, um, if that's okay. Um, I just wanted to share briefly our what our agenda is gonna look like for this is, um, we are so grateful to have presenters from eight different organizations sharing opportunities um, about jobs and internships. Um, so I'm really excited for you to meet them in just a, a moment through um, some presentations that they recorded for us. Um, and there are eight and each one has to present a lightning uh, three to five minute presentation. So we'll, for the first 45 minutes or so, um, we'll be hearing from those presentations. Um, and then after that, we're going to uh, wrap up those and we're going to turn it over to our Q&A and I'll be bringing up some questions that you had asked in the chat. And um, we'll also be hearing from some of those uh, presenters who are here today. Um, and really looking forward to all the information that they're about to share. So my colleague, uh, Lori, if you can go ahead and bring up our video, we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone. Welcome everyone, this is Ashley Holbin and we're joining here for Careers in International Development and International Exchange, a virtual career fair for people with disabilities presented by MyUSA with members of its EDI Initiative and Roundtable Consortium. And I'd like to invite Rachel to come join. Hi everyone, I am Rachel Dorman. Um, nice to meet you, thank you for being here. Um, I am our Senior Manager for International Talent Management at Global Communities. Um, I am presenting on behalf of Global Communities and excited to do so. Um, our website is um, 
www.globalcommunities.org. So if you want to visit, there's a lot of information there. Um, but just generally, I wanted to give an overview of our mission, our values, and our uh, vision as well. Um, our mission is as global communities, we bring together local ingenuity and global insights to save lives, advance equity, and secure strong futures. And our vision is a more just, prosperous, and equitable global community. Um, and actually, my, my favorite is our values um, and how we live them out. But our values are dignity, integrity, humility, creativity, and connection. Um, and on this slide, just um, to note, there is a picture in the right-hand corner of three women working on um, a project together. Um, they are they are all smiling that one of them does have a baby on their chest, um, but they are working together on a project um, and next slide, please. What global communities does so global communities works really at the nexus of 3 main areas. Um, global communities partners directly with local leaders, governments, international organizations, and the private sector to deliver solutions to urgent challenges while also building resilience for strong futures. We deliver emergency response and enhance resilience through humanitarian assistance with a focus on protection. We also, we also advance sustainable development by partnering with communities as they build resilient healthy lives and we expand opportunity through financial inclusion so we really work at the nexus of those three humanitarian assistance sustainable development and financial inclusion um, in terms of our geographic reach um, we are across multiple continents um, we work across africa europe asia the middle east and the americas um, and then the americas does include some domestic work here in the united states um, and on this slide, there is a picture as well um, on the, the bottom right hand corner. Um, there are 2 young girls uh, of primary school age and um, they are in a field and they have um, 1 of them has their arm around the other. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> And we have many different types of opportunities um, across global communities. We do within our website, we do have a careers website, which is globalcommunities.org slash join dash us slash careers. Um, and on that site, you can actually find um, both domestic opportunities and also international. And there are two separate portals um, for those. So you will find that on our career site. Um, our domestic opportunities, I'll start there. Um, we do have two offices in the United States, one in Silver Spring, Maryland, so in the DC area, and the other is in San Diego, California. Our opportunities really can span to be in either office. Sometimes it's open to either one. Sometimes we have a preference for one over the other for a certain reason. Um, but we also have opportunities for hybrid work and what that looks like is more of your uh, maybe 2 to 3 days in the office, the rest from home. So we have that opportunity um, and then also some opportunities for remote work as well, um, depending on positions. Um, and then going to our international side um, again, there is a separate portal um, or really a separate website within our career site for these opportunities and these are primarily. Um, expatriate, so U.S. expatriate or non-U.S. expatriate um, recruitments um, or locally hired positions. Um, so there are times where we need to find somebody from the local market and we will post it that way. Um, and we usually are working with our local HR team as well to recruit those positions. Um, and then lastly, I'll note that we, we do from time to time have consultancies posted. We have internships posted. So I would encourage you to look out for those opportunities as well. Um, and they can be both, uh, both of those can be in either the US or international too. Um, most of our internships tend to be in the US, however. Um, and then I will say that we, we truly do encourage people with disabilities to apply. And we at Global Communities will arrange disability related accommodations for employees or job applicants as needed. Um, we truly believe in uh, positively welcoming and seeking applicants from all sections of society. And we are committed to a work environment that respects the dignity and worth of everyone and offers equal opportunity. 
So again, all qualified candidates will receive consideration for employment. Um, that is, and my apologies, we do have one last picture on this slide, um, and it is a woman with a very big smile on her face um, at a local market, um, and she has baskets of um, different fruits and vegetables around her. Um, so I wanted to share that as well, but I want to say thank you um, on behalf of Global Communities. We are excited to, to hear from you um, and appreciate any interest that you have in the organization. Um, but again, thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Yep. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Catherine. Thanks, Ashley. My name is Catherine Messina Payach. I am with Solidarity Center. Um, it's great to be here talking with you and in, in the company of my colleagues doing uh, terrific work around the world. Uh, the thing that really sets Solidarity Center apart from most other uh, organizations doing this kind of work internationally, you can see in our mission, we promote worker rights worldwide. We are the largest, if not the only, U.S.-based nonprofit that is supporting trade unions and worker rights organizations. Um, you can read more about us on our website at solidaritycenter.org. Um, I am the Deputy Director for Organizational Development, but that also really includes recruitment, hiring, and professional development, as well as some others. Um, after the presentation, if you still have more questions or want to get in touch, you can email me. Uh, my email address is my first initial C, last name, A-J-I-C, at solidaritycenter.org. And, I, you know, I uh, spoke at this career fair about three years ago, and at that time we had 225 staff, and now we have 425 staff. So that tells you something about how much we've been growing in the last few years. We are in more than 60 countries. We partner with more than 400 trade unions, nonprofit organizations, uh, human rights defenders, workers associations, and sorts of, of coalitions. Um, so let's go to the next slide. To, to sort of frame our worker rights uh, programs, what we really do is help workers, whether they're in unions or not in unions, to defend their right to freedom of association. That means helping them to organize, advocate, raise awareness, negotiate contracts and better conditions uh, through collective bargaining, and often uh, help with them with legislative and policy change. Um, so we're really, you know, we're fighting for the rights of all workers, but we also really specifically focus in many, many parts of the world on the rights of workers with disabilities. Um, and that includes general workplace safety, as well as more specific uh, rights geared toward people with disabilities. But we also focus on living wages, job protection, and really an end to exploitation and abuse. And these might be workers in the mining sector, in construction, manufacturing, food processing, fisheries, agriculture, the public sector, healthcare, and even the informal sector, like market workers in the open markets or uh, domestic workers, people who are delivery drivers on, and working in the platform economy. So we really touch a lot of different types, uh, really every different type of work. Uh, and that includes micro. Well, so let's um, hop to the next slide. I want to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities we have. You can find out more on our website, again, at solidaritycenter.org. Go to the Who We Are tab and you'll find jobs and internships there. Um, we have about 120 people in our Washington, D.C. headquarters. It is a hybrid work environment, so we do expect the office three days a week. You can see it's a really nice office. You can, in, in my uh, screen, I've got, you know, a big window. Everyone has an individual office, which is quite nice. Um, we do have a few folks who work remotely because of ADA or health-related exemptions. Um, but in the U.S., most of the jobs here, I mean, they range from admin operations, finance and accounting, HR, to more program jobs where we look for a lot of program management type skills. 
Um, we hire people in our field offices all over the world. Some of those are expatriates, so most of them are local hires, uh, and they do a lot of the program. We do offer summer internships right now. We actually have applications open, I believe, for 10-week internships during the summer here in Washington, D.C. It's a $6,000 stipend, and they're pre research and, and sort of project-oriented internships. And finally, we have consultancies, which typically are um, geared toward people with very specific expertise. And in fact, right now, we are looking for someone to help us develop a disability rights toolkit that our staff can use in our work with unions who are trying to um, you know, be more inclusive in their membership and to be more aware of the needs of people with disabilities and the issues that they're facing in the world of work. So I would encourage all of you to check out our website and the opportunities we have. And again, thank you so much, Ashley, for organizing this and to Mayusa for having so much. Catherine, <clears throat> Catherine, this is Ashley. Thank you so much. And I really hope you find some fantastic candidates um, for that disability rights toolkit position, um, as well as others. It sounds like a fabulous place to work. Thanks again. And I'd next like to welcome Stacy to join us. Hello, everyone. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much to Susan and Ashley for inviting CIEE, the organization that I work for, to take part in this session. I had the pleasure of seeing both a few months ago in Paris at a conference that we host, and we were having a chat at lunch. And I think it was Susan who asked, there's a, a bunch of us convened, what are we doing to reach out to professionals with disabilities? And the answer was clearly, not enough. I mean, we talk about accommodating students with disabilities, although we don't talk about that enough either, but rarely about recruiting staff. So it is about time we got started, and I'm glad that this offers us an opportunity to do so. I um, work with an organization called CIEE that stands for the Council for International Educational Exchange. We were founded right after World War II with a mission to try to prevent another world war by connecting individuals from different countries. And Lord knows that mission is as pressing now as it was then. Each year, we help about 50,000 individuals experience 40 cities and 26 different countries. And those exchanges take many permutations. We have high school programs and college programs, short-term and long-term programs, study abroad and work abroad programs too. You want it, we got it. And depicted on the slide is an image of some, some happy students on one of those programs. I did one of those programs as well, eons ago, probably before most of the people watching this were born. Worked in a restaurant in <laughs> London one summer. Had the pleasure of serving Princess Diana, Harry, and William. I like telling that story to anyone that will listen, which shows <laughs> you how old I am, my friends. But that summer really changed me and changed my life, just like we say it will in all of our marketing materials. And I'm certainly a better human and a more empathetic human as a result. But I was one of two Black students on that program, which struck me as tragic, given all the benefits of this experience. And one of the reasons I work at CIEE now is that under our current leadership, and shout out to our CEO, we've implemented a number of initiatives to try to change that and to increase access to underrepresented groups. If we could go to the next slide, please. We offer lots of scholarships since cost is a main barrier to studying or working abroad. And by the way, if you're a student watching this and you want some of that funding, by the way, please check out our scholarships page. Also, Susan recently wrote this great article in uh, the Mobility International newsletter, which lists loads of CIE scholarships as well. So please check that out. And some of the projects I've personally had the pleasure to work on is outreach to institutions that serve diverse populations of students, our passport caravan, where we gave away 10,000 passports. There's a picture there of um, one of those recipients of one of those passports and the Frederick Douglass Global Fellowship, which is a fully funded scholarship for student leaders. As far as support to students with disabilities, we've still got a lot of work to do in that capacity. CIEE will cover the cost of accommodations 
for those who need it, who are participating in our programs. And not every program provider does so. So that's a good thing. And I learned from that article I just mentioned that our newer centers are being designed with accessibility in mind. So Edinburgh is an example. Rome and Berlin are other examples. So that's also a good thing. But participants with disabilities are definitely pioneers on our programs and severely underrepresented. So we need more. And the same goes for staff. CIE staff was pretty homogeneous for years, much like the field of international education. And we're doing better on some metrics like race, a lot better. But we need and welcome candidates with disabilities because representation matters. And I think of conversations at conferences that wouldn't have happened if Susan hadn't been in the room to start them, for example. So we need you in the room. Lastly, what kinds of opportunities exist for you? And the next slide, please. And there's lots. We are growing. After a very scary time during the pandemic, as you can imagine, but the desire to see the world lives on and we are back on firm financial footing and demand to see the world is rising, which is a beautiful thing. And we have positions all over the world. I should point out that you will need to possess the legal right to work in that country for wherever you seek to have employment. And there's a range of positions available. You could do advising or marketing or program management or finance or IT or HR, like myself. One place where folks often start is as a program coordinator or an admission advisor or a participant services associate. These are the folks who are on the front lines, as I say, because they are talking to students and their parents and teachers and faculty about the value of these kinds of experiences and really making it happen for them. So really helping make their dreams come true. And you can do that job from the comfort of your own home. All of our US staff work remotely. International staff, it differs, but you can always contact us to find out some more, some more details. You can also work from abroad for a month. I just worked from Cape Town, South Africa to get away from the New York City winter for a couple of weeks. Highly recommend doing that. And if you're craving more than that and you want to go abroad yourself, I also wanted to mention, and you don't have that work visa, you may want to think about our Teach Abroad program where you can teach English and get paid for it and have your housing arranged in Spain, Thailand, South Korea, or China. And the last opportunity that I will shamelessly plug is our professional development trainee program, which is for those who are new to the field. The trainees rotate through different teams at CIEE, they're matched with a mentor, and they take part in skill building workshops. So they really get a kaleidoscopic view of CIEE and international exchange. The positions are posted on my web on our website, and myself and my colleagues, Ria. Banerjee and Maduri Gunti, they're available for the live Q&A, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have at any time. Thanks again for the opportunity. Thank you, Stacey. These all sound like incredible opportunities. I don't know how people are going <laughs> to, where they're going to start, because they all sound so amazing, and I uh, really appreciate CIEE being part of this. Well, thank you so much. And now we'd like to welcome Syed. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, my name is Syed Zaidi. I am uh, the HR manager here at World Learning, uh, focused on both HRS, HR systems, as well as uh, recruitment. Um, and for those of you who may be familiar or not, World Learning is a nonprofit um, based out of Washington, DC. We focus primarily on international education, international development through education, uh, as well as international exchange programs. Um, now, on this slide, you'll see our overarching mission is to work globally to enhance the capacity and commitment of individuals, institutions, and communities to create a more sustainable, peaceful, and just world. Next slide. All right. So, um, briefly, just to talk a little bit more about World Learning. World Learning Inc. 
is essentially the umbrella organization. We're a family that includes global development and exchange divisions. So we have a few different flagship programs and divisions, um, and I like to think of them as business units within the organization. We have the experiment in international living, um, which is essentially our programs that focus on international education through exchanges. And then we also have our school for international training. This is based out of Brattleboro, Vermont, and it is a higher education institution that has accredited study abroad programs, as well as internationally focused master's degrees. Um, we really leverage our SIT portfolio when we put together projects as well as proposals for international exchange programs and development programs um, and funding opportunities to donors. For any more information about world learning and learning kind of about our history, where we've been, how we got here and where we're headed, um, feel free to click on the link on the slide and that'll give you more information about the organization as a whole. Next slide. So in terms of opportunities and careers with world learning, we have a multitude of opportunities. We have domestic opportunities here in the US. We have international opportunities throughout the world where we have a presence in over 20 countries. And then we also have our rolling internships. Now, uh, one thing to start off is we are a remote friendly organization. So as far as domestic opportunities go, we typically hire, we, we are usually eligible to hire people out of any state within the US. So even if you're, you don't happen to be based out of DC or Vermont, we have many opportunities that are open um, remotely to individuals throughout the domestic US. Um, primarily our domestic opportunities are a combination of entry level roles as well as internship opportunities, as you'll see in the third bullet point. To talk a little bit more about our internship opportunities, we have fall internships, spring internships, as well as summer internships. Um, we typically attract a wide range of individuals into our internship programs, those with diverse backgrounds, um, as well as individuals who happen to have uh, disabilities or are part of any marginalized communities. In fact, we partner with many institutions and organizations to help a, build a pipeline that is representative of those groups. So um, that's just a little bit about our internship program. Um, and if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me as that is, like I said, happens pretty much every season. And we recruit for at least four to five interns each, each, uh, each cohort. Now, our international positions are based throughout the, the world, um, and those are primarily positions that are funded either by USAID or our study abroad portfolio um, through School of International Training or Department of State exchange programs. So those are also great opportunities if you happen to be a little bit further along in your career journey, um, as they tend to be a, a bit more mid-level and upwards versus entry-level roles, which I think you'll find to have um, far more greater frequency in our domestic pipeline um, on our website. And you can access our website through the link here for all up-to-date opportunities at any given moment um, here at World Learning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Syed. And um, I believe the, the URL is uh, worldlearning.org, is that correct? Yes, yes. Perfect. And um, I happen to know that, uh, happen to know of many people with disabilities who've participated in uh, both world learning internships and um, full time positions there uh, at world learning. So really appreciate you sharing more about what what you all do and on the opportunities there. Thanks so much. Thank you. And now we look forward to hearing from Candice from IIE. Candice, welcome. Thank you so much, Ashley. Hi, yes, my name is Candice Holman-Arnone. 
I am a program analyst and DEIA co-lead uh, for our disability working group, both internally and externally. I myself am a person with a disability. Um, I self-identify with uh, cerebral palsy as well as being hard of hearing. Um, my email is crnown at ie.org, and I'm sure Ashley or, or if you need it, I'm sure someone can give that information to you. Um, IE is a large nonprofit. Uh, with a global presence of over 20 offices throughout the world. Our mission is to help people and organizations that leverage power of international education to thrive in today's interconnected world. We focus on work that achieves the following, advancing scholarships, building economies, and promoting access to opportunity. I'll give a visual uh, description of myself because I forgot. Uh, I am a woman in my mid thirties, mid to late, uh, I have auburn hair, I wear glasses, and I have rosy cheeks, and I'm wearing a black sweater with a red cardigan. Next slide, please. What IE does, we create and implement international education programs, conduct research, provide life-changing opportunities for students, scholars, artists uh, worldwide. Some of our programs um, are Fulbright, the Scholar Rescue Fund, IE's Crisis and Response, and IE's Artists in Protection Fund. These are four major uh, programs, but we have over 200 programs that we actually work on. Next slide. We have lots of opportunities at IE. Uh, you can work with us. There's a link to our Career Center. That's also where you can find our internship, but if you look below the slide to the third bulletin, you'll see that there's uh, internship link. Um, you can also apply for funding. Um, and we have, you know, with the programs and everything, we have all types of opportunities uh, for students to expand their education in a graduate setting. If you decide to go that route, I realize this is a career fair, but still valuable information to have. And if you're looking for a job or internship, please contact recruit at I as an ice cream, I as an ice cream, E as an Edward dot org. Next slide, please. This is just a screenshot. I'm gonna explain it visually as well. Uh, these are just the current internships that we have at IE, and I will be sharing in the chat uh, those internships. Currently we have six, and as you can see, and as I will describe, there are plenty of opportunity for it to be remote, um, or it can be in Texas, or it can be in Washington, DC, or it can be in New York, uh, it looks like we have one with the DOD. We have one with the Center for Ac Access and Equity. We have one with Fulbright. We have one with Bourne. We have another with Fulbright. And then we have one with the Saint, with the, excuse me, Thomas S. Johnson intern uh, program. So there's lots of opportunities there. If you would like to do an internship, our internships are paid. And I believe in the next slide or the slide after, I'll talk a little bit about benefits. Next slide. Benefits at IE. Let me tell you, I've been at IE for 12, almost 12 years now. The benefits are wonderful. IE actually helped me get my student loans um, forgiven. <laughs> I can talk about this, it's totally fine. I had over $200,000 in debt uh, because I have two master's degrees um, and they helped get that forgiven. They have a great uh, health plan, dental plan. Their paid time off is fantastic. You can get your student loan reimbursement um, paid back, which I, I do. I actually have one private loan that I'm still paying off uh, up to $4,000 annually. We have FSA, uh, dependent care, commuter care. We're very flexible with uh, telework and um, those types of programs. We are a hybrid model. So you do need to come into the office um, two times a week at least. Um, we have a professional development reimbursement program, a retirement program, we have life insurance, disability benefits, as you can see, as a person with disability, uh, and I work on that working group internally and externally. I know all about that. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And we have a variety of wellness offer offerings for our teams. And I think with that, that's everything uh, that I have to contribute to this wonderful fair. So thank you so much for your time. Well, Candice, uh, I really want to thank you so much for sharing all this great information. Um, and and just uh, we can talk about this more later during Q and A. But um, 
you shared some examples of uh, U.S.-based um, positions, and I was curious if uh, you know if you could say just briefly about IIE's uh, presence in other regions of the world. Yes, we have um, a focus everywhere in the world, from Australia to uh, New Zealand, so A to Z. So it really just depends on um, if there is a opportunity available, an internship or a career available. Um, in the region that you're looking at, but um, IE has been a, a nonprofit for 105 years. Uh, and if you are unfamiliar with the Fulbright program, that's our largest program. Um, it's a state program, uh, Department of State. Um, and it really helped. It's just a huge, huge multilateral program that we, we work on uh, with the state. So we administer for them. Uh, so keep looking at IE, keep looking at different regions, um, Africa, Asia, you name it, we've been there. Um, so just, you know, think about where you want to go in your career and hopefully we can support you to get there. Wonderful. Thanks again. Yeah. And now I'd like to welcome Benjamin from American Councils to join. Welcome, Benjamin. Thanks, Ashley, uh, for inviting us to be here. I'm really happy to be able to share a little bit about what American Councils does and opportunities for people and also our kind of culture of inclusion at American Councils. Um, so I don't know if you, there may be people here that have heard of our organization. Um, we work uh, particularly, mostly with exchange uh, participants, both high school students, uh, professionals, um, college students as well, both Americans going overseas as well as a lot of people coming to the U.S. Um, I work on mostly on secondary school and professional programs, and I got involved uh, in this field because I was really interested in other cultures and uh, traveling and learning about people that were different than me, um, and that's really been, been a lifelong passion. I've worked in this field for about 30 years. I feel like I'm constantly learning new things, whether it's about new cultures or uh, new, you know, aspects of things, um, whether it's the work or, or new people. Um, and that's what really keeps me passionate about this. Uh, and I think for us, it's been really important to have a very nurturing environment um, at our work that is inclusive um, and that people really feel like they belong and are motivated to, to be engaged in the work. So um, I hope that you can you know, check out some of the things we have here, our link to the website, um, so that you can poke around and learn a little bit more about what we do. Really, you know, our larger goal here is to empower people and institutions to address the challenges uh, that we have in our diverse and interconnected world. So it's a pretty big uh, thing that we're aiming for here. Um, just jump to the next slide. So <clears throat> a couple of things I wanted to mention. Uh, so that the ways that we go about our work, as I said, a lot of it is exchange programs, uh, also language learning for, particularly for Americans going overseas, learning a lot of uh, what are often referred to as the critical languages, that's Arabic, Chinese, Farsi, Russian, Hindi, Korean, Turkish, uh, Bangla, uh, Bahasa, uh, Swahili. Uh, there's a lot of different languages uh, that we work on. Um, and one of the things that's really important at our organization is that we are a learning organization. We're always trying to uh, look at the data, figure out what's working, what's not, and improve and move forward. And uh, likewise, I think one of the things that's really key for us is that when we have a diversity environment, um, we're going to be able to have better, more sustainable solutions and approaches to figuring out how to address whatever uh, issue it is that we're trying to solve, whether it's through a program or something just within the workplace itself. And so I've also got a link here to our um, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, focus so that uh, if people are interested in seeing that, um, we definitely encourage people with disabilities to apply to our positions. Um, we have a committee or subcommittee on uh, disability. We have a, a diversity committee and one of the subcommittees is uh, working on disability. We also have a number of affinity groups 
um, at the organization. And so there is definitely a robust kind of uh, what I like to call civic life at the organization um, for people to participate in um, of all kinds of different, uh, you know, identities and abilities, et cetera. So um, can we go to the next slide? So I've got a link here um, to uh, the open positions that we currently have. Um, there's a, a lot of different types of positions. You know, we work, uh, our main office is in the US, is, is in Washington, DC. Um, we do have some positions that are remote and we also have offices in many countries, um, in uh, Europe and Asia particularly, um, some offices in Africa as well. Um, so, you know, I've got a couple of positions posted here that may be of interest. Uh, we also have internships. We have manager positions open. Um, we have positions in Uzbekistan open, in DC remote. Um, and so we really welcome um, you to check out what things are there. Um, we have a lot of alumni uh, who have been in our programs that work for us, including an, a, a number of alumni uh that we've been really active with um that have disabilities that have been just uh doing really impactful work um and we're really uh proud of of uh all that they've brought to the alumni community um and we really look forward to having the opportunity to maybe work with you so please check out um the listings that we have for open positions and let us know if you have more questions and be happy to put you in contact with um, somebody at the organization and the human resources uh, if you have any other uh, questions that we can answer. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, this is really fantastic information and uh, really appreciate the variety. And I wanna encourage everyone out there to, to check out some of these positions and, and then some. <laughs> Really appreciate your time, Ben. And I'd now like to invite Jen to come on and share some information about Save the Children. Thanks Jen, so over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Ashley. Hi, everyone. Um, really excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us. Um, my name is Jennifer Kim. I use she, her pronouns and I am the advisor of Talent Attraction and Acquisition, which I always say it's a really long title for recruitment, um, but we are focused on attracting diverse and quality talents um, here in the U.S. as well as internationally. Um, hopefully some of you know that Save the Children is a global humanitarian organization and we work again, in the U.S. as well as around the world to, um, to give children a healthy start in life, the opportunity to learn and protection from harm. If you can go to the next slide. Um, Save the Children, we are a global movement and there are country and regional offices all over the world. Um, and we all have a shared vision, which is a world in which every child attains the right to survival, protection, development, and participation. Um, and our ambitious mission is to inspire breakthroughs in the way the world treats children and achieve immediate and lasting change in their lives. And then our values, there are five things within our values, accountability, ambition, collaboration, creativity, and integrity. Um, I can go to the next and slide. I noticed that you have some um, lovely images here. Yes. Maybe just to really briefly say what you have up here. We do. Um, so we have three images. The first one is a picture of children, I believe in um, South America. Um, and all the children are raising their hands, showing off, I believe it's a small image, but they're wearing bracelets that they made together in a program. Um, the middle one is a fun picture of a girl wearing paper made glasses around her eyes. And then the last picture is a picture of a staff member who works actually in our policy and advocacy side, um, visiting a local school. Thank you. Sure, if we can go to the next slide, please. 
Um, and we have an inside out approach to disability inclusion that saves the children. Um, our inside approach includes intentional sourcing and recruitment efforts with diverse partners such as Mobility International USA. Um, and we have accommodations available for all staff, which we internally call it success enablers. And that may include maybe, uh, you know, a special mouse to be used with the computer. Sometimes it involves um, sign language interpreters and things like that. And we um, try our best to get creative to make sure that we are doing what we can to to make sure our staff is set up for success and continue to have that uh, those accommodations for their success. Um, we also have a fellowship program uh, that we host every spring, summer, and fall semester that is focused around our international programmatic work. Um, it's called Geyer Fellow for Disability Inclusion. And again, we have them every single semester. So if you're interested, if you're currently a student or a recent grad and you're interested in disability inclusion work, um, please connect with me. I'd love to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, and our focus at Save the Children has been building an inclusive culture that helps integrate and support persons with disabilities. Um, and, and those include like, integrating strategies such as and creating more accessible space and also um, incorporating those cultural things and inclusive things into our budget as well. And this slide also has a picture of one of our students who is taking advantage of fun Save the Children backpack. Um, we have educational programs here in the U.S. as well as all over the world. So I thought it would be good that. Next slide, please. And I also wanted to share a little bit about our benefits and perks of working at Save the Children to um, give you a better sense of what it's like to work at a place like Save the Children. Um, we have benefits such as health insurance, including medical, dental, and vision. We have plenty of paid leaves, including safety and wellness, where we, um, of course, when we need to run to the doctor's office, but also if we need a mental break, we can use um, that paid leave to to take some time off. We also have a very generous retirement plan um, that matches up to 8%. And things like life insurance, summer fun Fridays, which I love talking about because starting or during summer, so starting I believe in May until um, early September, we have I believe four summer fun Fridays where our offices are closed and all, all staff are um, encouraged to take the time off to spend with their families, with their friends, with their loved ones, or, and, and, and enjoying the summer weather. Um, also, ways to stay engaged at Save the Children includes diversity, equity, inclusion council, which I am a part of. I'm a council member of the DEI council. We also set up um, what we call culture champions who are going to work with our senior leadership as well as um, staff who are currently located in all parts of, not just here in the US, but all over the world. Um, we also have employee affinity groups and one of them being DAWN, which stands for Disability, Ability and Wellness Network. Um, we also have other em employee affinity groups, which we call EAGs, such as Early Career Professionals, where you get to be a part of a group that, uh, it really takes a time to learn about different career paths, learn about leadership and different things like that. We have one called Race to Children where we have parents or future parents um, and what it's like, you know, working in a world that is mostly virtual and, and sometimes in person and how we best raise our children while managing our full-time uh, full work. Um, and we also offer different learning and development opportunities at Save the Children. For example, we have a really fun one that I really want to talk about is Charlie, Charlie Sam Fund, which is um, a program where we send staff, um, selected staff to participate. And um, they get a chance to visit either a domestic or an international program site 
So they get to kind of see our work firsthand and experience and meet the communities that we work with um, and that we partner with and get a sense of um, an in-person programmatic work. Um, and we have an amazing and dedicated safety and security team who helps arrange and coordinate these travels. Next slide, please. Um, how to join Save the Children and how to stay connected. I listed some of the current employment opportunities and I will read a few out of the, I think about 10 that I included. We have um, more entry level roles, such as Senior Associate of Global Development Policy, um, Lead Associate of Government Relations, um, Lead Associate of Copy Editing and Proposal Support. We also have um, more middle and senior level um, opportunities as well, such as Senior Director of Finance Management. We have an Advisor of Communications for our Foundation's fundraising team. Um, we also have teaching positions for our Head Start programs. We have IT positions such as Senior Advisor of Solutions Architect. And also we have, like I mentioned earlier about the fellowship program, along with the Geyer Fellow for Disability Inclusion, we also have a full program for spring, summer, and fall internship and fellowships. Um, we just completed the recruitment for our summer program. And during the summer, we'll open up internships and fellowship positions for our fall semesters. So if you are interested, uh, please connect with us or please check out our careers page, which is listed on the slide. Um, it's www.savethechildren.org forward slash careers. Um, and please link with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to stay connected. I tend to share all of our open positions that I might be currently recruiting for, as well as internship fellow fellowship programs on there as well. So you will be kind of the first one to know when we get those posted. Well, Jen, thank you so much. This is amazing information. I really appreciate the uh, you sharing some examples of some current openings and and how people can stay connected. And I'm sure the the summer fun Fridays will be here in no time. Um, well, thank you so much to uh, our presenters. Great, and I'd like to invite a couple of additional uh, guest presenters to join me, who, which are our colleagues from USIP, and I'll let them introduce themselves and say a little bit more about what USIP does and what opportunities are available. And um, we, uh, I'm gonna ask that they stay within three to five minutes if possible, but looking forward to uh, hearing more about that. Over to you. Great. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. My name is Julie Ramirez. I work at the U.S. Institute of Peace as the executive assistant to the chief talent and culture officer um, as part of the HR department. And I'm accompanied by my colleague, Julia Shaiwal, who is the senior program specialist supporting the religion and inclusive societies team. On the screen, you can see the link to our website that will take you to um, not only our careers page, but it'll dive deeper into the work that we do at the Institute. Our emails are also listed on the screen. Um, following this uh, virtual career fair, we welcome you to reach out to us should you have any additional questions that we don't cover during this time. USIP's mission is to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflicts around the world by engaging directly in conflict zones and providing analysis, education, and resources to those working towards peace. One second, I am going to move this over. Am I, is my screen still sharing? Uh, yes, I see your screen. Great, thank you. So what does USIP do? The US Institute of Peace is a national nonpartisan independent institute founded by Congress and dedicated to the preposition that a world without violent conflict is possible 
practical, and essential for U.S. and global security. In conflict zones abroad, the, U the Institute works with local partners to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflict. To reduce future, future crises and the need for costly interventions, USIP works with governments and civil societies to build local capacities to manage conflict peacefully. The Institute pursues its mission by linking research, policy, training, analysis, and direct action to support those who are working to build a more peaceful and inclusive world. So uh, additional things that we do, um, we serve as a nonpartisan government partner and trusted intermediary among foreign governments, civil society, and US government officials. We work in conflict zones at the community level and with national and regional governments with a focus on connecting top-down and bottom-up initiatives. Uh, we partner with stakeholders around the world to research, support, and advance strategies to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflict. And we draw on its ex and we draw on our exceptional convening power to bring together diverse audiences to exchange knowledge and ideas necessary for developing solutions to the most pressing peace and security challenges. A little bit more about the opportunities that we offer at the Institute. Uh, we provide a diverse range of job opportunities catering to various interests, whether you're drawn to the programmatic roles or oper operational positions, USIP offers opportunities such as internships for students, contractor positions in the field, and employee roles focusing on regional and thematic areas. I've been fortunate enough to uh, build my career in human resources at the Institute. I started off as a human resources assistant and uh, had the opportunity to kind of dabble in different aspects of HR. So I share that with you to let you know that one of the things I really appreciate about USIP is the opportunities to grow within your career. It might not be a place that you stay forever, but it's certainly a good stepping stone and a good opportunity for you to really figure out what your next step is and also to place you in a very good position once you are ready for that step. Some of the careers that we offer at USIP include employee positions that can range anywhere if you are a young professional or early in your career path. Um, we have positions anywhere from administrative assistants up to directors, program officers, um, experts. Those are just a few examples. Uh, the personal service contractors, that is for our staff and our um, folks who are working in our offices abroad. Um, so, you know, if you have regional interest, um, that's a perfect opportunity for you to, um, you know, get some field experience and work in the countries that USIP currently works in. The research assistant program is designed for full-time university students. So it's very similar to an internship program, but at USIP, we call it um, the research assistant program, but it's an opportunity for full-time university students to gain practical experience while completing their studies. Um, it is a paid internship and it, most of our programs will throughout the year have a need to bring on a research assistant. Um, I always say that, you know, research is the foundation of the work that we do at USIP. So I personally um, value what our research assistants bring to the table. Um, I also have the opportunity of providing administrative support towards the program. Uh, so I help recruit and I help support the recruitment efforts from different centers and programs. Our fellowships are uh, mainly for competition, um, meaning that uh, when we have fellowships, we usually compete them, allowing uh, everybody the opportunity to apply and to participate in them. Our fellowships typically don't go anywhere beyond a year, but it's also a great uh, short-term um, experience or opportunity for those who may not even be in the area and are maybe working in a different state. This gives you flexibility to be part of the fellowship program. 
And independent contractors are also typically the vehicle we use for um, individuals that we want to hire based on their, their level of that will based on a certain um, aspect of their expertise. Um, those are also very short term opportunities, but again, they're very great if you have a focused skill. Um, so, you know, between the range of opportunities here, I would say that that's the more short term, but if you're looking to be, you know, part of our team on a more long term um, scale, I would focus in on positions like our personal service contractors or our employee positions. And now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Julia Shaiwal, who will uh, provide more information on the um, careers and uh, different aspects of them at USIP. And um, if you can just uh, be brief, because we have lots of questions coming in. Thanks, Julia. Thank you, Julia. Sure. Uh, thank you. As Julie said, my name is Julia Shaval. I work on the religion program at USIP, and I also support our Afghanistan team. Um, to give you a little bit of the sense of how USIP is internally structured, and I'll keep this brief, um, we have, in terms of programmatic work, regional centers and regional and country offices around the world. We are currently working on the ground in 26 countries. We also have a center for thematic excellence, which I am located in. Um, some of, of our regional centers include our Asia, MENA, Latin America, Africa centers. Um, and then they have some teams that are regionally focused, like our team focused in Central Asia. Um, inside the same center, we have our Afghanistan team, which is specifically focused on Afghanistan. Um, in MENA, we have a broad MENA effort. We also have Libya and Tunisia offices focused specifically on those countries. And then in the Center for Thematic Excellence, we have a large number of teams with uh, globally recognized expertise on specific issue areas, including women, peace and security, religion, which is my team, and the climate, environment and conflict team. These are just examples. If you want to learn more about USAP and all the other great teams we have, I encourage you to check out our website. Um, in terms of opportunities at USAP, there are opportunities for anybody with regional expertise or knowledge or any type of specific capability or skill that can support uh, specific thematic work. So for those of you that might be interested in gender or the climate issues, or may have good regional expertise or on the ground experience in countries, USAP has opportunities um, to support our efforts. And to just give you a little bit of an example of some of the work that we do, when we say programmatic efforts at USAP to prevent and mitigate deadly conflict around the world, that can look like high-level dialogues and formal peace processes in Colombia, supporting the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in Colombia. It can look like on-the-ground support to women's rights activists in Afghanistan, bringing them together with religious scholars and lawyers who can support them in-country advocating for their rights under the new de facto authorities. It can look like quiet convenings with USG partners and partners all around the world to achieve a specific aim in the peace process. It can also look like grassroots peace building with indigenous leaders and indigenous communities in Manipur and in India. We have a huge wide swath of work. I'm sure there are opportunities for everybody um, who's interested in specific things. Uh, and Julie can tell you more about the specific opportunities we have available. Um, but there's a large number of different things we do with uh, country offices in 26 countries and every region of the world. So definitely take a look at what we do online and I'm happy to answer more questions. Wow, that's amazing information. This is Ashley. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you, Julie, for sharing more about USIP. And um, we can go ahead and take down the screen share at this point. And I'd like to invite Susan back on. We've had, we have so many great questions come in during that segment. And um, we, we planned to end um, 15 minutes after the hour, which is not very far from now. Um, but we do have our interpreter, interpreters and captioning team um, who, if they're still good to go, we can go a little bit beyond that, but not too much. Um, but Candace, uh, I want to start with Candace because um, she's going to have to uh, leave pretty soon. But Candace, I did see a question come in. Um, what would be the academic qualification for internships? The academic qualifications, I believe, I'm not part of HR, I'm a program. Uh, analyst. I work on Open Society Foundation. That's my sponsor. Um, so from what I can tell, just speaking as a person who sees these emails go out, it's often um, 
individuals with a with a with a collegiate degree, college degree, but not always. I have seen some people working like during their university experience uh, and applying for internships. So I strongly encourage you to look at those internships uh, and, and see if you fit the bill. You know what I mean? Great, thanks, Candace. Thank you. Um, we also had, well, first of all, um, I just wanna say one more time, thanks to all of our presenters and I hope our folks listening and watching, um, tuning in are, you know, finding some things that are, that are catching their attention and maybe they'll go back and, and apply for some of these. Uh, some folks have been wanting to know if they're gonna get to have the presentation later on and absolutely, yeah, it takes a little bit of time just to get everything um, uploaded to YouTube, but I will be notifying when that becomes available. Um, let's see, we also have some questions. Let's see, maybe for our other guest present or any of the guest presenters. Um, some people want to know what about age? Is age a factor in, um, you know, when you're seeking employment? Um, maybe someone wants to say a little bit about that. So, in addition to disability, being a person with disability, also just kind of thinking about age. And I can start. Um, hi, this is Jennifer Kim from Save the Children. Um, so, for Save the Children, Internships and fellowships, there isn't age limit or, or any age restrictions. We do ask that um, they are currently enrolled in an undergrad or graduate program or within six months of graduation. Um, so if you've graduated, you know, for example, if you're graduating in March, you have from now until six months after to apply for those roles. In terms of non, so normal roles, um, normal positions that are not internship or fellowships. Um, we do require all candidates to be at least 18 years of age. Um, and that also speaks to our work because we work um, and partner with children and communities. Um, we, our our you know, critical definition for children is anyone younger than 18. So 17 and younger. So we, we do ask, we do have that um, policy in Thanks, Jen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, here's another question, maybe for CIEE, actually. Um, you know, you had, Stacey, you shared all that great information about being able to teach a language. Um, and so some of the questions that people responded to with that were, um, you know, is there some training involved to teach? Um, I think you talked about teaching English. And also someone wanted to know, is teaching Spanish an option? For the question, um, yes, there is training that you are provided with. Uh, so you start off with, I'm not sure about the duration of the training, but there's a whole course that we offer to our potential instructors um, that you would take along with the other folks who are also training to be teachers. But the main requirement is that you are a native speaker of English. We welcome all ages, just to answer the previous question. I think our oldest teach abroad participant was 90 years old, so I've heard. So we welcome all ages. And I forget the last bit of the question. Can you remind oh, me, uh, Ashley? Oh, with uh, is teaching Spanish. We have a lot of people- Oh, teaching um, Spanish. Joining in from <laughs> Spanish speaking parts of the world. Yes, not at the moment, but what a great idea, which I'm going to take back to our um, senior team and see if we might be able to do something like that. But at the moment, that program is for those who are teaching English. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, let's see. I do have another question here, kind of related to that uh, training, maybe for our other guest presenters um, can speak to that. What kinds of, um, is there some sort of training involved uh, for new hires when, when they're coming on? And can you say a little bit about that? I can uh, chime in um, on that. I'm Julie from USIP. Um, so what we offer our new hires um, when they first come on board is a comprehensive orientation. And that orientation gives you a deep dive and a deep understanding, not only what we do at the Institute, 
but it provides you the resources that you're going to need um, to get started, at least for the first few weeks of your employment. In addition to that, we also have a 90-day uh, window of trainings that some are required, some are optional, but we do provide those resources to our new hires um, so that they have that. And we also like to do follow-ups. Um, you know, just to check in after a few weeks of employment to see where you are and see how we can offer anything that you think that you um, still may need. But, you know, we we really ins um, ensure that from the moment we submit an offer that the person feels welcome and that they have the resources they need to, you know, just hit the ground jump uh, running. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, Let's see, are there any other, um, let's see, I see, still see even more great. Oh, I like this question. Um, so we have a lot of people joining, um, like I said, from countries around the world and, um, and from the US and many of them speak English, but many of them speak other languages or don't speak English as a first language. And so one person's question is, do you have to be a native English speaker to work at these jobs? And I was wondering if maybe for some of the, some of your job positions, um, what kind of language requirements are there? And maybe if you have positions open in other parts of the world, I assume the language requirement is uh, respective, to, depends on what country it is. Is that, would that be a correct assumption? Yeah, for Save the Children, um, English, we ask um, that you have professional proficiency in English does not have to be your first language or your main language. Uh, and additional languages, bilingual, trilingual, um, always is an advantage and bonus points in terms of candidates because, um, you know, working globally and having international programs, um, knowing another language or languages really can be beneficial. Very true. All right, well, we have, um, we do have a couple of more questions, but um, let's see, maybe I'm going to ask Lori to, and I want to say thank you so much to Jennifer and, and Candice and our, um, well, all of our presenters in case you have to jump off sooner as well. Um, Stacy, who is also joined by her colleague Madhuri, who is tuning in from India, um, and Julie and Julia. And um, I wanted to ask my colleague Lori to pull up one more slide just quickly because we shared a lot of wonderful information today from all these different organizations but there's even more out there <laughs> of course and so we want to make sure that you know where to find um not just opportunities with these organizations but others as well and again you'll receive these links um later on but on the myusa website we have a couple of different places um where you can look for jobs from our Eddy member organizations, um, of which there are several. So if you're someone gravitating towards international development and humanitarian assistance, um, and then I'll also share the link later where you can find jobs with our roundtable on international exchange focused organizations. And of course, um, you know, our Mayusa e News and LinkedIn as another place where we kind of highlight some different positions. And then uh, again, if you're interested in those international NGOs, the ngojobboard.org is a great resource um, that you can check back. And again, they you, there's usually jobs, not just in the US, but um, in regions around the world. Um, let's see. Uh, and then of course the Mayusa website, you know, if, I know if for those of you who are interested in uh, working with Mayusa, um, we occasionally post positions on Mayusa's website. Um, we do have a few more questions and I'm so sorry, we're not gonna have time, but I'm happy to direct you to the people that you wanna to connect to offline. Um, maybe one more quick question for the US-based positions. Uh, let's see, does the candidate receive support to obtain a work permit, a US work permit? So um, I'm not sure if we have any guest presenters who are still here, but um, let's see, maybe, we, maybe we'll save that question for later, but thank you for asking it. Um, and I think this might be a good time to turn it over to Susan, just to share any final thoughts on this great event. Right. Hey, this is Susan Siegel speaking. Thank you so much. Well, 
first, thank you to all our presenters, um, Eddie members, roundtable members. Um, we could not have done this without you. Thank you to our interpreter, captioner team. Thank you to my use of staff and especially to Ashley. And I just wanna close Ashley by just really encouraging all the amazing people who have joined us today, um, people with disabilities from the US, people from around the world, share this information not only with yourselves, but with the communities that you work with. Because I know for me as a person with a disability, being in the field of international exchange and international development, that is a way for us to really have a say on policies. People can um, see us. I think that will re help recruit other people in both the fields of international exchange and international development. And how exciting it is to have all these organizations saying, yes, please, people with disabilities, where are you? So whether you're encouraging people to attend programs with all the amazing scholarships, to internships, to staff, I think this was such a great beginning. I'm so excited that we'll have it on our website. Keep sending us your questions if you have it. But I think this is a really a big change in the world that we're seeing today. And I see, as we see more disabled people be part of all these fields, as I said in the beginning, I think we're gonna see big changes in the world. And um, I'm so excited. So thank you, Ashley, for your leadership. Thank you, everybody else. Um, have a great rest of the week. We'd love to hear more from you. And um, thanks to all. And I wish I could give a big hug to all those who are new to joining Mayusa and a big hug. And thank you to all of my friends from around the world who are with us today. So with that, Ashley, back to you. That's what we have for you today. But if you'd like to turn your cameras on at this time, just so we can wave as we uh, depart for this time around. We'd yes, it'd be great to see everybody. Places, but until next time, everyone, thank you so much for, for being part of this event today. Yes, thank you all. Hope to see you soon at something else. Bye, thank you very much. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> great Bye. To see you. Apply, apply, apply.